What's up, everybody? Lauren with the TMF Podcast. Tonight's show is sponsored by, you guessed it, me. Me, myself, personally. And I am supporting tonight the first free as fuck TMF t-shirt. You can get them in the link below in the description on my site or on Etsy. And Tim, if you watch this one, yours are leaving out tomorrow, buddy. I uh, got lucky today and scored a, uh, a, a printer for free. From nice, nice old man out there in Canton. Gave me a free printer and I gutted it. Get this bad boy printing again. So, I'm going to throw that uh, t-shirt down there so that you guys can check it out. And if you want to order one, hit me up. Follow the link below. But tonight, I'm going to talk about something a little bit controversial just a little bit and don't be offended by this please please don't be offended because we'll, we'll, we'll follow into why here in a minute but i'm gonna start it off with that don't be offended all right you can check out the shirt right here and that's the one i'm wearing right now free as fuck so tonight we're going to talk about we're going to talk about this juror in the Derek chauvin trial we're going to talk about this a little bit. I kind of stayed out of the dirt. I didn't really cover any of it. Look, man, here's the thing. That dude died, George Floyd. He died. And if Derek Chauvin wasn't the arresting officer, probably wouldn't have died. Look, man, we made a lot of decisions. I'm not going to get into the right or wrong of what they did or didn't do. I think that uh, my personal opinion... Derek Chauvin should definitely do some time, for sure. Um, but this isn't about whether or not Derek Chauvin is guilty or innocent or should get a new trial or an appeal or anything. This is really about the actions of this juror. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you live under a rock or you just stay out of the news or whatever, and that's cool, too. And I'm going to pull it up and just explain to you what we're talking about. So right here, we have a juror that was part of the trial who he's the only one who came out after the trial and wanted to talk about the trial at all. He's the only one out of 12 that came out and said, all right, this is kind of how they were feeling. Um, this is, you know, kind of what was going on. And look, we believe we when I say we, I do mean everybody believes that it'd probably be almost impossible to be a juror and have no prior knowledge to the crime. Now, when you're selected to be a juror on a jury, generally you have no idea who the person is or what they did. And when you enter the courtroom, it is upon the prosecution and the defense's job to explain to you why this person did or did not do this crime. That is the consensus for being on a jury. You are impartial, and the prosecution and the defense both have a chance to, um, you know, they kind of interview them, they do jury selection, and they pick the jurors that are going to be part of the jury, right? And they have to agree upon it, and they can strike them and what, so on and so forth. We've seen this countless times. It's portrayed in TV shows, movies, everywhere, right? So I, I feel like with the George Floyd case, it is 100% impossible to find someone who has no idea what happened, doesn't know who uh, Chauvin is, doesn't know this case at all, at least any of what we've been told, right? We've been told everything. We've seen the video. It's all over the internet. It's all over every news. There's riots in the street, everything. So find people who don't know about it, right? That's strike one. You can't. It's impossible. It's impossible. Then, the second thing that's impossible is to sequester the jury so that they're not influenced by what's happening outside the door. That also seems impossible in this day and age. So you've got, you've got two strikes for you on the trial. Then you have what this guy's doing, right? So everyone kind of like, all right, guilty, guilty, guilty. This guy's going away. Sentencing is going to come up, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, we all pretty much are going to say that Chauvin's guilty. Yep. What crime? That's where the debate started. But, and that's really just a matter of law to me. You can't just go, well, he's a murderer, and there's there's more than just one murder that we that you can get sentenced to. So 
there therein lies the the discrepancies that we're going to run into amongst people that you talk to right second degree murder third degree murder first degree murder manslaughter second degree manslaughter so there's all of these different things that incorporate the law that we as civilians generally have no idea about we don't know to the severity so it's their job to prove it to us to explain it to us and then see if it fits the crime i don't even want to get into all that what i do want to get into is why this guy came out and said anything at all. It's unnecessary. Trial's over. He's guilty. Wait for him to be sentenced and then forget he exists. Simple. You want him to go away? Forget about him. Stop talking about him. He goes away. Right? He gets Epstein away. No one talks about him. Just don't stop talking about him. You forget about it. Right? That's what happens. You know, he disappears. But not this guy. This guy came out and wanted to talk to people. Make himself known that his name is Brandon Mitchell and he's 31. Let me tell you what the internet does when you come out here and start talking shit. And you start saying stuff. And you want to be on TMZ, the New York Post, anywhere. Ellen, pick, take your pick, man. I don't know where he's going, but look, he's out there. They're going to pay him for his information. And so the internet does what the internet do. They take your name and they find out everything about you. And what did they find? They found this right here. They found this man wearing a BLM t-shirt with get your knee off our neck and Martin Luther King Jr. Photoshopped in there at a Black Lives Matter rally. That was like the most biased situational person, right? Just take that one situation and put him on the jury trial. Look, before all of this comes out, it's fine. It's no problem. There's no misconduct. There's no misdoing. There's no, there's no harm done. After this comes out, we have a problem. We have a legal problem because Derek Chauvin's attorney is going to use that to strong arm into some sort of appeal. Very possible. I also have a problem with him putting Martin Luther King Jr. on the shirt because now we're comparing... We're comparing George Floyd to Martin Luther King Jr. That's not in any way, shape, or form fair. There's, there's no comparison. We don't need to put this dude, Martin Luther King Jr., in a shirt. If you don't like that, it's okay. You don't have to like that statement. It's okay. You have one of the greatest civil rights movement human beings to ever walk the earth, dedicated his life to civil rights movement, and you've got George Floyd, who was a arguably a criminal, had a criminal past, who was on drugs, and who died in police custody. These aren't the same people. Don't act like they're the same person. They're not. Martin Luther King, look, if he had a shirt that had BLM, get your, your, your knee off our back or neck or whatever, with George Floyd's picture on it, that discussion never would have came up. Now, would it have been accurate? Been it could have been anyone. I'm pick, pick, pick your neighbor. Put your face on. I don't care. Pick anyone else. But don't pick Martin Luther King Jr. That's not, that's not accurate at all. He, he went out there and dedicated his life to changing the, the world, especially in our country, for black Americans. George Floyd didn't do that. George Floyd had to die unjustly by a white cop for anyone to care about him. And that sounds mean, and that sounds cruel, and that sounds like no one cared about him, but... Look, you got a world of people. You got a freaking gold ca gold casket. You had a freaking three funerals. If George Floyd had died the day before from anything else, zero people would have cared. Maybe not zero, but you get what I'm saying. Wouldn't be on my uh, screen here. You wouldn't be watching this podcast about it. And that dude wouldn't have been wearing a shirt about it. 
Because he damn sure ain't wearing a Martin Luther King shirt walking around a year before George Floyd died. So what I'm getting at is, is this guy took it upon himself to put mad attention on himself. And then the internet do what the internet do. They do a deep dive. They go find out what it is that you've been doing. And now there's, now we're still talking about it. Now there's going to be a whole nother possible situ situation with his trial. And if anything comes up and this guy has to get a retrial or who knows, like, I don't see it happening. I don't see it happening based on that, but it could. And that would be on this guy right here, whatever his name is. I just said it. Now, honestly, Brandon Mitchell, be on, be on you, Brandon Mitchell, be your fault for getting your face in the news, walking around with your t-shirt on, acting like you'd never participate. It's on the, it's, it's on the freaking jury selection. Did you or someone close to you participate in any of the demonstrations or marches against police brutality that took place in Minneapolis after George Floyd's death? That's the question. Other than what you have already described above, have you or anyone else participated in protests about police use of force or police brutality? He says no. There's a picture of him there wearing the shirt. This is a problem. Bias in the juror. Now, I believe wholeheartedly that every juror on the trial was biased. I believe that it is uh, impossible to go in there without some sort of bias. If you have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, a newspaper, a telephone, a neighbor, uh, you live in a tree, you have a dog, pretty much everything knew George Floyd. Everything knew Derek Chauvin killed George Floyd. That's all we heard. Impossible. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not trying to defend George, uh, Derek Chauvin in any, any way, shape, or form. Dude is 100% responsible for that man dying. Even if even if he did not die as a direct result of his knee on his neck or back, the moment an officer places you under arrest, handcuffs you, detains you, they are solely responsible for your life. Completely. They're responsible for your well-being. You are no longer in, in, in some shape responsible for that. They have removed the responsibility from you and placed it upon themselves as part of their job, serve and protect, right? If they're going to serve you with a warrant, they need to protect you and get you safely back to jail. If you want to uh, fight them, try to stab them or shoot them or run them over with a car, and then they now it becomes a protect myself scenario and a self-defense scenario, that's different. And I understand that. But their number one job, is to make sure that you are apprehended safely. So regardless of whether or not he was in the right to arrest him, or regardless of whether or not he was uh, using a tactic to apprehend him that should have been safe, regardless of what happened, those officers were responsible for not killing that person. It's pretty simple. And we can't take this and twist it. So there you go. You know, Mitchell said, uh, I think I was being extremely honest in, in the jury selection process. I gave my views on everything on the case on Black Lives Matter. Um, but this could be a, a, a problem. I'm not saying that he's a problem as a person. I'm saying that what he is doing could be a problem. And it's not a problem because it's good for Derek Chauvin. It's, it's a problem because it's it in the nature of the law and the way that our country governs and the whole you know, freaking trial process. It's a problem. So I'd like to know what you think about it. Um, obviously, it's going to be a problem. It's going to be in the news, but leave me a comment. Hit the like button. Hit the bell if you'd like to be notified when stuff comes out. And if you'd like to get one of these wicked badass shirts that says free as fuck and i will upload that right there again boom you can check it out in the description below you can order it right off the site and i ship it right to your dough and when i say me i mean me this dude right here i go to work i print your shirt bro 
I'm not using Shopify. I'm not using Printful. Bro, this is a small business supporting people around America. So, till next time, I'll catch you guys later.